Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here on the west coast of Canada. I hope everybody has had an awesome week and I hope you're into a great weekend. Right now students we are going to be looking at a reading passage practicing for that perfect band 9 score. And this reading passage will be about the Sistine Chapel ceiling. So it'll be an interesting uh, topic for us today on April's 1st, April's Fool's Day. Um, all right, this material is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS, visit us there. Uh, for the general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com. This is a members chat class, everybody. Of course, you're welcome to watch. We will have an all chat class in about 90 minutes that will be listening parts three and four. Welcome to the class, Saeed. Um, our websites, they look like this. This is our academic IELTS website here with the blue background. You can click this big red button to join the premium IELTS package and you can use the discount code PERFECT. Uh, perfect nine for that 20% uh, discount. So make sure to use that. Uh, General IELTS, same idea, green background. You can click this big red button to join the premium package there. Uh, we have two websites, of course. One is for the academic IELTS, the other is for the general IELTS. Today's reading passage comes from the academic IELTS, but in the general IELTS, the third section of the reading is very similar to the academic IELTS passages. So you could see this passage in a general IELTS reading section three. So it's very valuable to watch. And again, uh, use that code PERFECT9 on our websites to get all of our practice exams, reading passages, videos, uh, videos for reading strategies like true, false, not given list of headings. We'll be looking at some question strategies today as well. Um, students, the apps are Academic IELTS Help and General IELTS Help. You can use those apps to um, link to the website so that you can study on the go. And uh, IELTS underscore AE Help. GL's help, those are IG, Instagram profiles, check us out there. If you have questions, send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. Um, students, we've got classes today, so reading, listening right now over the next uh, three hours, and um, then we have uh, some speaking classes for you tomorrow. So we'll have speaking part two and speaking part three tomorrow for everybody. Okay. All right. Um, so we'll do some volunteering for reading today as well. We always give our members a chance to do some reading and then I can give you some feedback on your reading skills. So we'll do that in a little bit, but First, let's look at um, the reading passage for today. Welcome, Tatiana. Hi, Kyber. Uh, welcome, more members. All right, so this is a reading passage three from our sixth exam book, or sorry, our sixth test in our second exam book. Um, and uh, we've got a beautiful kind of uh, picture here of the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Uh, I'm not sure who is familiar with this famous ceiling or who is not, um, but it's definitely one of the more famous uh, paintings in Western uh, civilization, painted by uh, the famous artist uh, Michelangelo. So you've got a picture. Anytime you have a picture, students, in your IELTS reading, that is very useful. The first tip or the first hint that a picture gives you is to visualize the content. Okay, so when you have a beautiful picture like this, you should be reminded that, hey, I should really try to picture and see this information uh, while I'm reading. 
And then you have this uh, painting, the Sistine Chapel, the title. So the title also uh, gives you a bit of information. Okay. And so when we look at this painting, um, we should uh, ask, uh, and we look at this title, we should ask and we should think critically about this information. So the first question we should ask, sir, ask ourselves is, what is the painting in the Sistine Chapel? Okay. So if you ask yourself this, if you're thinking critically before you start reading, and this happens very quickly, this happens in a matter of seconds in your mind. Um, so what is this painting of the Sistine Chapel? Give me an answer, members. Um, what is that? And you have the picture there, so just kind of simplify it. Um, give it to me in a very concise kind of way, in a one short sentence answer. What is this painting in the Sistine Chapel? And so imagine that you visited this place. You can kind of, you know, you get a lot of information from the picture here. As Saeed says, it's probably something about sacred people. Yeah, Saeed, I th definitely think you're on the right track. Okay. Uh, Tatiana says it's some Christian motifs. Yeah, Tatiana, it's definitely some, uh, it's a religious painting. Uh, Cassandra says it consists of a picture of kings and saints. Yeah. Okay, um, this is how I want you to think, okay? So I want you to master this kind of thinking, viewers. Um, it's a complex ancient religious painting on a ceiling. Okay. So if you ask me what this is, all right, and this is that concept of thinking about your audience as an alien. They just do not know what you know. And this is for your own benefit to be able to think like this. So what is this painting in the Sistine Chapel? It's a complex ancient religious painting on a ceiling. Okay. If you get other ideas like it's kings and Catholic uh, motifs and this and that, that's, that's fine. It's, it's good to get those more specific ideas, but you want to just kind of think simple, right? Thinking simple is not easy because our lives become so complex, especially by the time we're adults, but thinking simple is elegant and it often helps you to find the correct answers to questions, okay? So it's a complex ancient religious painting on a ceiling. Okay, why? Why has this painting been uh, created? Okay, so again, um, just really simple answers here. Okay, train your brain to think logically in a simple way. All right. So why would, why would a person or people take the time to paint such an elaborate painting on the ceiling of a building? Okay. Saeed says for its beauty. Yeah. Okay. I like, I like the simplicity Saeed. Yeah. So to make it pretty. Okay. Any other ideas? And I think, Saeed, what I have in my mind, I'm kind of thinking the same way as you. Okay, well, while you're typing, I'm going to give the answer for this and see if you kind of come up with the same idea. I would say it's to decorate the ceiling of an important religious structure, right? 
So we can imagine that this painting is likely in some kind of a church or a cathedral or a basilica. And uh, they want to make it pretty. It would look kind of boring if it were just a white ceiling. So, yeah, to make it pretty, to make it beautiful, and to decorate the ceiling, right? Tatiana says, to further influence believers religiously. Yeah, it possibly. Um, I mean, there are churches and there are religious buildings where you don't have as much decoration, right? But I would say here it's to really just decorate the ceiling of an important religious structure. Okay, and how? So how has uh, this painting been created? Okay, and this is a really good question to think about before you read this passage. So when you look at the questions, when you read these paragraphs, Having these ideas in your mind will really help you to interpret and understand the passage faster, better, more accurately. Um, so, and of course that will lead you to higher band scores at the end of the day, right? So, um, Nuthan says by hand, okay. Yes, <laughs> Nuthan, I think that's, um, um, fairly obvious. They didn't really have uh, printers uh, doing painting when this were made by hand. Sure, okay, but let's take it a little bit further. Uh, Cass says it's a painting of, done by Michelangelo, which is fine if you know that it's done by Michelangelo, Cassandra, that's great, but who is Michelangelo? What did he do? How did he do it? So even if we know that it's Michelangelo, we still want to kind of think about like, well, how, how did he actually do it, right? Uh, Kyber says they applied the washes of paint to wet plaster while creating it. Um, Tatiana says using special construction to reach the heights of the dome. Yeah, Kyber, Tatiana, it's pretty good. I think you're, you're over complicating it. You're going into too much detail. I would make it simpler. Um, painted by a talented individual um, with lots of time and effort involved. Okay, so if somebody asked me how was it done, I would say, well, obviously it was done by a very talented person who gave a lot of time and effort to do it. Okay. Does everybody kind of get that? So again, simple concepts. Um, the concept that the way you want to kind of answer these questions, these critical thinking questions is basically where you almost have this answer like, duh, yeah, of course that's what happened. But that's when you're on the right track. Okay, that's when you're thinking in a clear and focused way. So here again, let's go over these questions and answers. So what is this painting in the Sistine Chapel? It's a complex ancient religious painting on a ceiling. Why has this painting been created? To decorate the ceiling of an important religious structure. How has this painting been created? It's painted by a talented individual with lots of time and effort. Okay, so simple concepts, all right? Don't overthink it. Those ideas that you have that are more detailed, they'll be useful later, but you need to be able to think in a simple and elegant way when you're looking at these reading passages, okay? So now that we've done some critical thinking, um, we can take a look at the questions so here it's complete each sentence with the correct ending A to I below. So that means that we've got lots of choices, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. We don't know which of these are true or mentioned in the passage. So we don't look at those choices. We just look at the, um, the actual broken phrases here, okay? So the Sistine Chapel is, Michelangelo had been concerned with his, okay? 
A logical problem Michelangelo faced was uh, unpainted areas of the chapel. A common misconception is that four years of working in uncomfortable conditions meant that Michelangelo must have had something. Okay, so clearly here we realize by reading these questions that the painter in fact is Michelangelo. Okay, and this passage will definitely discuss the technique and the skills used by Michelangelo to paint this chapel. All right. Okay. All right. So now uh, we have some multiple choice here. Okay. So 33, 34, 35, multiple choice. Again, um, we are only concerned with the uh, question because from the choices we have A, B, C, D, uh, we simply don't know what is true, what is included in the text. So we want to ignore that because it's going to be quite confusing if we read those choices. So we just look at the multiple choice question. Why was plaster laid each day? Now, a good strategy for multiple choice, when you're practicing at home, do this on paper. When you're in your exam, do this in your head, is to change this into a statement because you're not going to likely read questions you're going to read statements. So you want your mind to think about these questions in the form of statements, okay? So, plaster was uh, laid daily so that something, okay? So that's how you would change this question into a statement. Think about it as a statement because that's what you will likely see in the text, okay? If you're thinking about it as a question, it's harder for your brain to make that connection, to make that association. Is that clear, members, what I'm telling you here with multiple choice? This is actually a very simple trick, if you will, but it's a very useful trick. Uh, when you train your mind to do this, uh, you'll notice a sudden um, improvement in your multiple choice accuracy and not only your accuracy but also your speed, your, your uh, ability to quickly uh, discover the answer from the information, okay? So uh, keep that in mind, okay? Um, it is a simple and effective uh, trick to change multiple choice questions into statements uh, so that your mind has a much uh, more logical approach to finding the answer. Okay, keep that in mind. It's, it's, it really does work. Okay, Cass says got it. Kyber says yes. Okay. All right. So keep that, keep that in mind. All right. Okay, um, so let's do that with the rest of these. What did other fresco painters do that Michelangelo did not? Um, other painters did this, but Michelangelo did not. Okay, and again, you don't have to do a lot of changing here. Amri, thank you for that super chat donation. Yeah, we do upload materials on the website all the time. Uh, we just uploaded um, the new speaking video that came out last week, the full version of it. Uh, Amri, so you can check that out. Okay. All right, um, number 35, the Sistine Chapel has survived to modern day because you don't need to change anything here because this is a statement, okay? So this is the kind of statement that you want to see, right? And then um, we have these yes, no, not given questions. These ones we don't worry about because we don't know which are true, which are given, uh, which are not given or false. So we don't worry about those yes, no, not given questions. Those we just leave until we're at the end. And then we solve those as the last uh, task. 
All right. So now uh, let's go back and let's read this. And again, students, remember, you want to visualize the content. So this is a very visual kind of content. It's uh, information about painting a chapel. So you can really imagine that you are Michelangelo, okay? All right, painting the chapel. Okay, it's a good way to do it. Just imagine that you are this person living in ancient times and you are painting uh, the Sistine Chapel. All right, um, to do this reading, I'm going to uh, hop over to our website where we have audio for reading. Um, students, I highly recommend uh, using the audio uh, for reading to help you improve your reading fluency. Now, I'm already logged in, so I'm going to go to my student account here and then uh, we'll go to the audio CDs. This was uh, CD6 track seven, okay. And here we go. Painting the Sistine Chapel. The Sistine Chapel, named after Pope Sixtus IV, whom directed its construction, is one of the most important sites in all of Roman Catholicism. Located within the Vatican, the seat of papal power, the Sistine Chapel has been home to the papal conclave, the process of electing a new pope, since its completion in 1480. It wasn't until 1508, however, that the ceiling of the chapel took on its famous frescoes from the hand of Michelangelo. Until his Until work his on the work ceiling, on the ceiling of, the of the Sistine Chapel, Michelangelo, Michelangelo had primarily been a sculptor. sculptor. In, In fact, fact, he was, he was hesitant, hesitant to begin work on the project, on the project due to his lack of experience with frescoes, the name, the name given, given to, to a painting on a wall or ceiling, ceiling usually, usually watercolour paint, paint on fresh plaster. plaster. The Pope, Pope was adamant, adamant however, however, and in the spring of 1508, Michelangelo began the work. The first problem with painting the Sistine Chapel ceiling was its extraordinary height. Reaching almost 70 feet above the chapel's surface, the ceiling would be incredibly difficult to access. To reach it, Michelangelo devised a series of scaffolds that attached to holes in the walls of the chapel. To this day, there are still unpainted areas of the chapel corresponding to the points at which the scaffolding attached to the walls. Unlike Hollywood portrayals, Michelangelo did not paint the ceiling whilst on his back. Instead, he painted in an upright position. This resulted in rather extreme neck soreness from constantly working with his neck craned into an uncomfortable position. Michelangelo even wrote a poem detailing the difficulties he encountered. It is a testament to the physical prowess and mental fortitude of Michelangelo that he was able to complete the project. Four years of physical and mental anguish must have been truly unbearable. Painting frescoes is a labour-intensive task. Because the plaster must be fresh, this necessitated that fresh plaster be laid on every single day for that day's paintwork. This section of plaster is called a gionata, and the edges between gionate are still visible today. In fact, these visible section demarcations give a great idea of how the work progressed from day to day. While most fresco painters used a pre-made drawing of the day's work to stencil onto the plaster, therefore making the painting easier, Michelangelo painted directly on the fresco. This is perhaps the most impressive aspect of the fresco. Every day Michelangelo continued the back-breaking work under continuous pressure from the reigning Pope, Julius II. In addition to its beauty and majesty, the masterpiece has passed the test of time. Painted over 500 years ago, the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel has survived remarkably well. All of the credit for this hardiness goes to Michelangelo, who was painstaking in his pursuit of perfection. If a section of plaster was not exactly to his standards, he would start over. He must have known that his work might last for centuries, and he wanted to make sure that it did. The quality of the plaster work is germane to the longevity of the work. Paint can be restored through cleaning, but if the plaster fails, the work is lost. Only a very small section of the ceiling has failed. 
in 1797, there was an explosion at a nearby gunpowder depot, which caused a small section to chip away and fall to the ground. There was also some minor restoration work done on the ceiling in the late 20th century. Restoration experts meticulously removed layer upon layer of soot, grime, dirt and other deposits. This made the fresco much brighter and more vibrant, and resulted in a fresco much closer in appearance to how it would have appeared at the time of its completion. Interestingly, the restoration also involved removing the fig leaves which covered Michelangelo's nudes. These fig leaves had been ordered in the 1560s by the very conservative Pope Pius IV. Despite its record of hardiness, there are concerns about the well-being of the ceiling moving forward. Millions of tourists visit the chapel every year, and this traffic has a degrading effect on the paint, as well as the structure of the chapel. While restoration on the paint can periodically be done, it is very difficult, if not impossible, to restore damaged plaster. While Michelangelo's work has stood the test of time so far, it is unclear how many more centuries his masterpiece will last. Currency. Okay, so that is the reading of the Sistine Chapel. I hope everybody was reading with this person, just like I did at the beginning. So that was why I did that bit of reading to give you an example of how to uh, read along with the audio. And uh, I hope that uh, you're doing that. If you're having trouble keeping up with this uh, reader, then um, I definitely recommend practicing uh, you know, your reading uh, so that you can get to that kind of speed. Okay, everyone. So I'm going to come back to this reading again, and we're going to read it one more time before we look at the questions for practice purposes. But this time I want to give members the chance to uh, read. So primarily, uh, I want members to volunteer for reading. Okay. And, um, and then we'll go through each paragraph again and we'll visualize this content. So uh, to volunteer for reading, okay, it's just the same as for speaking. Uh, you go to the website aehelp.com, you create an account and log in. Okay, there's, you can create a free account. If you don't have a paid account, it's okay. You click on student partner speaking and then you message me. You'll see me as master. So message me and say, I want to volunteer to read. And reading practice is great. I can give you a quick bit of feedback on your reading, what you can do to improve, and then we can move on, okay? So again, let's do this together. So hopping back to this website here um, and um, you log in, so you're you're first going to see this kind of home page here. You can click on Join Now or Try Demo. Then the uh, My Student uh, account up at the very top there. And then you'll see this uh, Student Partner Speaking. That's right there. Okay, click on that. Um, you have to click I Accept and Start Speaking. Uh, this is simply just saying that you accept uh, responsibility for your communication. Okay. And then you'll be in here, and uh, I see that there, we have a few people in here. So we have Tatiana, Maria, Amrit, Jimmy, False. Hopefully we have a couple of volunteers to start reading this passage, okay? It's not a lot of paragraphs here. I think it's only about four or five paragraphs. So uh, Tatiana, uh, Maria, Amrit, uh, Jimmy. Um, I think False was actually um, Saeed. Uh, I know that for some strange reason you keep coming up as that name. Um, so that's fine. Um, so let's have some volunteers, okay? Uh, be brave. Uh, don't be shy. Just uh, just read, okay? Uh, yes, you can. Okay, and I want to move along nice and fast so we can get to the questions, everyone. Hello. Hi, Tatiana. How are Hi. you? I'm okay. Thanks for asking. Good. Are you ready to read? Yes, I'm always ready. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. That's a good attitude to have. All right. Um, okay. Then um, start with the title, uh, Tatiana, and then we'll move to uh, body paragraph one. Whenever you're ready. 
Okay, I'm ready. Should I read? Yes, go ahead. Uh -huh. Start with the title. Ah, painting the Sistine Chapel. What is this painting? What is this painting uh, in this in the Sistine Chapel? It's a complex ancient. You can religious. just jump to paragraph one, Tatiana, starting from. Uh, I know we have a little bit of delay, but you'll see it now. Starting from the okay, Sistine I can Chapel. see it. Mm -hmm. The Sistine Chapel, named after Pope Sixtus the uh, Fourth, who directed uh, its construction, uh, is one of the most important sites in all of Roman Catholicism. Located within the Vatican, the seat of papal papal power, the, Sist the Sistine Chapel has been home to the. A papal conclave, the process of electing a new pope. Since its, its completion in 1480, in 1480, it was until uh, 1508, however, that the ceiling of the chapel took on its famous frescoes from the hand of Michelangelo. Until his work on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, Michelangelo had primarily been a sculptor. In fact, he was hesitant to begin work on the project due to his lack of experience with frescoes. The name given to a painting on a wall or ceiling, usually watercolor paint or fresh plaster. The Pope was adamant, however, and in the spring of 15A, 1508, uh, Michelangelo began the work. Okay, very nice. So, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, Tatiana, this is a uh, passage three for the academic mm -hmm. IELTS. And one way that IELTS uh, uh, exam makers um, increase the difficulty of each passage, so passage three technically is should be the most difficult or mm -hmm. most challenging out of the three passages. One of the ways um, that they increase the, the difficulty of, of each of the next passages is through using um, more specific, unique academic vocabulary, if you will. Um, so, you know, I could tell that there were a few words in this paragraph that were kind of new to you, um, mm -hmm. like uh, papal conclave, for example. Papal was new. Yeah. So papal is a different uh, word form of uh, pope. So papal yeah. as yeah. an uh -huh. adjective here. It's an Understood adjective. That. Okay, so papal conclave, um, and um, and there were a couple other ones. So what you want to do is um, when you come across these kinds of new vocabulary when you're doing your reading, you want to circle them and then you want to go back and uh, enunciate them twice, nice and loud, like papal conclave. Can you just repeat after me, papal conclave? Papal conclave. Papal conclave. Papal conclave. Okay. Adamant. 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 So anytime you come across these words, you kind of repeat them twice nice and loud. And then once you've gone through the paragraph from start to finish, repeating each of these challenging words, then you read the whole paragraph again. And of course, if you have a bit of time and you don't know what some of those words mean, then you want to find the definition and not just the pronunciation of those words. And then you reread the paragraph. Now, in the official IELTS, when you're doing your IELTS exam, you can't do that, of course. You don't have the time and it's not the time to learn. Then you just kind of read through them. So even if you can't pronounce it, you just kind of brush through uh, those challenging words um, so that you keep your fluency and your coherence, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, um, so you read this paragraph and uh, this paragraph has some, some important and interesting information. When you visualize um, this information uh, and you see yourself as Michelangelo, so you're like, okay, I'm not Tatiana, I'm now this painter Michelangelo living 500 years ago. Um, what do you kind of see yourself doing? So what's what's happening in your world as Michelangelo when you read this paragraph? To the best of my knowledge, Michelangelo was uh, very welcomed by the authorities and lived uh, in the palace and enjoyed life. 
So I am spending my time as I want to improving my art, doing sculptures, and uh, rolling in money. <laughs> okay, so you have to be, I, I like the way you think that, you know, but I think you're being a bit too creative. <laughs> so I think you're actually deviating from uh, the information um, that's given to you. Uh, and I'm not sure if it's quite true that Michelangelo was, uh, was treated with uh, such, uh, such high regard. Um, he was really put to work. Um, and in this paragraph, especially near the end here, um, it says, you know, it wasn't until 1508 that the ceiling of the chapel uh -huh. took on its famous fresco from the hands of Michelangelo. So I kind of see this um, this blank um, canvas. Canvas is what painters paint on. So I see this kind of blank canvas, this big white ceiling. Uh, I'm Michelangelo. I'm looking up at this huge white ceiling and I'm like, oh man, really? You guys want me to paint that? Like, uh -huh. you know, if I'm Michelangelo and someone points at the ceiling of an airport today. My life right? was so good before that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'd be like, really? You want me to paint that? Are you crazy? Um, so I'd be, I'd be a little bit stressed about that as Michelangelo for sure. And um, here we also read that Michelangelo had primarily been a sculptor. So sculptor meaning that I make statues. So now it's like, really, you guys want me to do a painting? I'm not even really a painter. What, what's going on uh -huh. here? And so it says right here, um, in fact, he was hesitant to begin uh -huh. the work on the project due to his lack of experience with frescoes. So yeah, so here I am, I'm like, okay, I'm pretty good at what I do, but I don't do that. Um, and, then, um, and then it says here, uh, the Pope was adamant. Do you know what this word adamant means? Yes, sure. Yeah, he was insistent. Very nice. Paraphrasing. Insistent and adamant. Yes, very good. Insistent is a great word. He didn't want to give in. Exactly. So he kept trying to convince me. He's like, oh, come on, Michael. Come on, Michael. You know, you're going to go to heaven if you do this. God's really going to like your work. Um, so he's really kind of pushing. I bet you that those were kinds of um, ideas that he was putting in uh, Michelangelo's mind. So uh, probably also things like, you know, we'll kick you out of the city if you don't do it. Um, so yeah. um, so he was really pushy, right? And to put it a simple way, he was pushy for Michelangelo. So even though I'm like, ah, but I'm a sculptor, come on. And no, 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 Michael, you can do this. Uh, it's, it's not that big of a job. A um, few years of your life. Um, yeah, you so, don't understand. I don't ask you. I tell you to do it. Exactly, right? So that's the kind of visualization. That's the kind of um, um, pretend world that we want to create while we read. Uh -huh. um, the, the beautiful difference between reading and movies, right, is when we read, we become a part of the story. And I think that's what has been lost in um, modern day society compared to our parents, grandparents time is that a lot of us don't read anymore because we don't understand that incredible value of becoming a part of the story, being immersed into the story as opposed to movies, which we kind of see from a distance as if looking through a window kind of thing. So reading has a higher degree of empathy and it's that empathy that we want to practice when we're reading, right? So. Um, so here we want to be Michelangelo and this is what we want to feel like we're being pushed into this huge job that we don't really want to do, but we have no other choice. Okay. Uh, and as long as you get that, as long as you get that kind of central part of this paragraph, um, you're on the right track. Okay. Uh -huh. All right, Tatiana, thank you for helping me explain and exemplify that for everybody. And uh, now we'll move on to the next paragraph. Okay. Of course. And uh, I'll find somebody else for that one, Tatiana. So have a, an awesome rest of the class. Hang in. Thank you. Thank you very questions. much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bye. Bye. All right. Um, so uh, let's take another volunteer. Here we have Amrit. Amrit is volunteering, I think, as well. Hi, Amrit. Would you like to read? So um, students, as I'm getting you to volunteer and read, uh, this is what I'd like you to do. So imagine you're Michelangelo living at that time, looking at this big white ceiling that you have to paint. Um, and uh, people are kind of pushing you to do it because you're obviously very talented. So 
let's keep going here. All right. And I know we have a little bit of lag, so hopefully Amrit is on par with me here. Um, Kyber, Carolina, thanks for the thumbs up. Uh, it's good that you're supporting each other when you're doing these reading exercises, okay? Uh, Tatiana put herself out there and she did a good job, definitely. Okay, Amrit, I don't see your response, which is fine. Um, Cassandra, let's see if you're here. Uh, Amrit, I'll circle back to you a little bit later. So Cassandra, are you ready to do a little bit of reading? Again, these are like kind of nice long paragraphs. They're a bit more challenging because it is passage three. So you come across some more unique words, right? It's a very specific topic, painting a fresco on the Sistine Chapel. Okay, I think we just lost Cassandra, which is fine. Um, and I think this is Saeed. I would love to read, okay. We'll find someone here. We got people coming in. Okay, I believe this is Saeed. Just coming up with a different name. Okay. Hello, sir. Hi, is this Saeed? Yeah, 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 exactly. Hi, Saeed. Yeah, I should, I've learned that. Again, has never heard my nickname. Yeah, I don't know why it's coming up like that. Okay, Saeed, um, awesome. So uh, let's get right into reading, um, and uh, we'll go to the next paragraph here. Okay, um, so here we go. Uh, whenever you're ready, from um, the first problem with painting the Sistine Chapel ceiling was. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm ready. Go for it. The first problem was painting the Sistine Chapel ceiling uh, was its extraordinary height, reaching almost 70 feet above the chapel surface, the ceiling would be incredibly difficult to access. To reach it, Michelangelo devised a series of scaffolds that attached to holes in the walls of the chapel. To these days, there are still unpainted areas of the chapel corresponding to the points at which the scaffolding attached to the walls. Should I read the rest of it? Oh yeah, keep going. All right. Unlike Hollywood portrayals, Michelangelo didn't paint the ceiling whilst on his back. Instead, he painted in an upright position. This resulted in rather extreme neck soreness from constantly, constantly working with his neck cranked in an uncomfortable position. Michelangelo even wrote a poem detailing the difficulties he encouraged, uh, encountered. It is a testament to the physical proveness pro Provis and mental fortitude of Michelangelo that he was able to complete the project. Four years of physical and mental and anguish must have been truly unbearable. Painting frescoes in a labor-intensive task uh, because the plaster must be fresh. This um, necessitated that fresh plasters be laid on every single day for that day's paint work. This section of plaster is called uh, giornata and the edges between Jayornet are still visible today. In fact, these visible sections, demarcations give a great idea of how the work progressed from day to day. While most fresco painters use a pre-made drawing of the day's work to uh, stencil onto the plaster, therefore making the painting easier, Michelangelo painted directly on the fresco. This is perhaps the most impressive aspect of the fresco. Every day, Michelangelo continued the back-breaking work under continuous pressure from the raging Pope Julius II. All right, good, Saeed. Okay, so a few uh, challenging words. I kind of highlighted a couple of these. Uh, just um, repeat after me. Prowess. 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 Yeah, it means uh, ability. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Anguish. 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 Anguish here means pain. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, necessitated. 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 This means made necessary. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this last word here, it's not raging. <laughs> I kind of smiled when you said that. <laughs> it's raining. 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 Just like right, the same same uh, pronunciation as uh, rainfall, like it's raining outside, mm -hmm. but raining. different spelling, so it's a homophone. Um, raining. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And reigning in this case means ruling. So currently in power. Okay, so the ruling Pope Julius II. All mm -hmm. right, good. So otherwise, good reading. Okay, um, with unique words, like in italics here, you see giornata and giornate. Uh, these are Italian or Latin words. Um, you don't have to worry about the pronunciation of those. So you read those correctly. You just read whatever way you can and then keep going, right? Because they're foreign words mm -hmm. brought into the reading. All right, so mm -hmm. um, let me ask you then here, Michelangelo, what's going on with you? Well, the feeling was pretty high. Mm -hmm. that, that's why I, I got a back pain every time I painted on the ceiling. Mm -hmm. um, additionally, uh, as I remember, I uh, draw uh, directly under the fresco while other painters uh, draw um, like onto onto the plaster, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so there's something there, right? While other painters were cheaters, yeah. they they drew on paper first and then they stenciled it. Um, stenciling yeah. is when you like um, draw on paper and then you put it on top and then you draw over top of it, so it makes it much easier. Uh -huh. You don't make mistakes, right? Um, yeah, so Michelangelo uh -huh, just did it from his head directly on the ceiling yeah they're right, making right. mistakes right so so mm -hmm. they're kind of like you know they're it's like they're they're cheating they're making their work easy but you're the true artist you don't need um, yeah <laughs> such, such techniques you go direct on it okay and then hopefully another piece that um that you kind of uh visualize yourself doing is that you're even making this kind of special scaffolding um, uh -huh. to help you climb this ceiling so that you can uh, yeah. paint. Um, are you familiar with this word scaffold? No, no, I've never heard of it actually. Okay, scaffold, that's the, um, the kind of ladder frame that you build uh, when you are constructing or doing work on a building. Mm. So when you see those buildings and you see those kind of metal pipes and platforms that the construction oh, yeah. workers yeah. are climbing on, uh, that's called mm -hmm. a scaffold. Okay, a scaffold. Oh, all right. So a scaffold is I'll a type that. of frame. It's a type of frame. Okay. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's why it's visual. It's difficult to visualize yourself doing that if you're not familiar with that <laughs> yeah. word, right? Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, you're okay. building that special scaffold. Okay. Um, all right, uh, Said. Thank you so much for volunteering to read that yeah. um, paragraph for us, and then no uh, hang in there. We'll get to the questions uh, fairly soon here. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Appreciate thanks. it. Bye. All right. Uh, that was Saeed um, and uh, Cassandra. I see that you did message me back. Connection was kind of slow. Let me give Cassandra a call here. We can uh, maybe get through one more paragraph here. Hi, Cassandra. Hello. How are you, sir? Oh, this is not Cassandra. That is really, really weird. I thought I just called Cassandra. Uh, yes. What is this? Yeah, my name is Amrit. Oh, this is Amrit. Oh, okay. Sorry, I clicked underneath, Cassandra. It's Amrit. Hi, Amrit. How are you? I am also doing great. And what about you, sir? I'm doing good. Okay, well, Amrit, hey, um, perfect. That works as well. So, uh, Amrit, are you ready to read? Yes, sir. Uh, actually, sir, you message me, but uh, I'm not receiving your message. And uh, when I reply, yes, I'm ready, but actually it not received. Late. Yeah, that's yeah, all yeah. good. Um, fate has now brought us together. So here we go. Uh, whenever you're ready, Amrit, start with in addition to its beauty. Okay, sir. May I read, sir, or no? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In addition to its beauty and the majesty. The masterpiece has passed the test of time. Painter over 500 years ago, the ceiling of the Stein Chapel has survived remarkably well. All of the credit for this hardiness goes to Michelangelo, who was painstaking in his pursuit of perfection. If a section of plaster was not exactly to his standards, he would start over. He must have known that his work might last for centuries and he wanted to make sure that it did. 
the quality of the plaster work is germane to the longevity of the work the paint can be restored through cleaning but if the plaster fails the long work is lost and only very small section of ceiling has failed in nine and in 1790 uh, in 1790 uh, 97 can you scroll mm -hmm. yeah it's just the delay you'll see it in a second yeah yes sir was an explosion at the nearby gun powder depot which caused a small section to chip away and fall into the ground Okay, very nice summary, nice reading. Okay, um, yeah, with dates too, you don't have to really get stuck on it. Just kind of recognize it's 1797 and then you're good to go. Yeah, okay, sir. so here you're still Michelangelo, all right? And let's imagine you're Michelangelo that can live for hundreds of years. Um, so what do you see here as Michelangelo when you read this paragraph? Mm. What are you doing? What's going on? Uh, can you sir uh, scroll? Oh, we've kind of lost it here. Just a second. Uh, I have to reload this. Um, reload this. So just give me a sec. Um, when you're reading, though, you should be able to read and remember. So if you're having trouble uh, remembering Amrit uh, while you're reading, yeah, yes. um, you want to practice that. Okay. So you want to practice remembering while you're reading. Um, <clears throat> let me get back to it here. It'll just take a second. Okay. Um, so you're reading something about the uh, work itself, right? So okay, about sir. the paint. It's two parts, right? One part is the painting and the other part is the plaster. Okay. Yes, uh, sir. Um, it's very difficult for me to remembering. When I was um, while reading Okay, so the trick in, in this case then is um, you want to read multiple times. When you're practicing at home, uh, then you want to read multiple times uh, the, um, the paragraph. So once for fluency and then read it again for uh, comprehension, okay? So okay, here, um, okay. This is where you were reading. So in addition to its beauty and majesty, the masterpiece has passed the test of time. Painted over 500 years ago, the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel has survived remarkably well. And all the credit for this hardiness goes to Michelangelo, who was painstaking in his pursuit of perfection. If a section of plaster was not exactly to his standards, he would start over. So here, if you are Michelangelo or as Michelangelo, you have to see yourself as this perfectionist. So you're painting this huge ceiling and you're like, okay, if this piece is not perfect, I'm just gonna scrap it, I'm gonna break it, I'm gonna scrape it, and I'm going to start all over again because I want this to be awesome and I want my great-great-grandchildren and their grandchildren to see this painting, right? So that's kind of what you should have visualized in this paragraph is that you're this perfectionist. You really want to do awesome work. So anything that's not perfect, you start again from the beginning and then you redo that work. That was, okay, sir. That was kind of the key to this paragraph because the painting can get cleaned, right? But if the ceiling falls down, like that piece of the ceiling falls down, then the painting's destroyed, okay? And that happened because there was an explosion. So some smart guy next door blew up some gunpowder and destroyed a part of the painting. Okay, so that's something else that you want to see here as well. All right, Amrit. So um, an okay, important sir. point here, Amrit, is when you're doing the reading at home, um, when you do reading aloud like this, if you can't remember what you're reading, then read it at least one more time silently and really focus on visualizing. So focus on building your fluency, one part, and also focus on building your comprehension. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay, so read, reread, read, reread. Okay, I'm read. Okay, okay, Sam. All right. Okay, uh, keep it up, and we're going to get to the questions here in a second, Amrit. So uh, thank you for coming back and uh, reading. Okay, sir. Thank you so much, sir, right. for okay. giving me a nice chance. Absolutely. Bye-bye, sir.
Okay, um, let me see if I can call Cassandra. <laughs> Hello, Cassandra. Hi, sir. How are you? I'm doing great. How about you, sir? I am doing fantastic. Okay, so uh, Cassandra, got a hold of you. Um, I'm going to uh, do something a little bit different with you. So, <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> we're going to um, look at the questions. Okay. okay. So here uh, we have the first set of questions, uh, which are sentence completion type. Okay. And the sentence completion type questions, uh, the way that you do them is um, uh, you think about the answer yourself first and then kind of look at the answers after. So question 27 here says the Sistine Chapel is. Okay, um, so uh, what is the best way to finish this sentence the Sistine Chapel is can you finish it with just it there are a few different ways that you could finish this sentence but whatever works for you uh, the Sistine Chapel is uh, is um, the ancient church uh, which had this painting made by Michelangelo with its ceilings as okay. his ceilings painted by Michelangelo yeah, okay, so the Sistine Chapel is an ancient church that had its ceiling painted by Michelangelo. Okay, that's a good way to finish it. Can you finish it another way? What else is it? What else is the Sistine Chapel? The uh, Sistine Chapel is the is the church that is, most, uh, is, is located near the Vatican City. Very nice. Okay, so the Sistine Chapel is a church in the Vatican City. Sure. Okay, that's another good way to finish it. Is the that. Okay, um, there's another way. Um, who does it serve? So it kind of tells you this in the beginning and... And I can kind of remember this because this is this is why if I'm Michelangelo, who was being pushy with me to paint? Uh, like um, the the Pope. Yeah, like pope. who? Like we can kind of think about it. Like whose ceiling was I painting? Right? I'm kind of painting yeah. the Pope's ceiling here, right? Yes, yes. So, yes. Um, so the Sistine Chapel is home to the Pope. It Yes, yes, home to the Pope, yes. We can say that as well, right? Yeah, yeah okay. yes. Okay, so it's home to the Pope. It's, uh, it is located in the Vatican. Um, it is an ancient church that had its ceiling painted by Michelangelo. Okay, those are some good thoughts. So um, have a look at the choices now. Uh, which one of these do you think matches the best to one of the answers that we gave? Okay, um, I haven't seen the choices. Yeah, it's for... coming up now. It's just the, the lag. The even even with ultra low latency, there's about a five second lag in live streaming. So, oh, so you'll see it now. Okay, I think it's uh, it's either letter C or letter C. I like that answer. Okay. It's either letter C or letter C. <laughs> right. oh, yeah, no, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, letter it was C. good. It was good because it is letter C. It is, it is letter C. So I thought that was, yes, like, that, yes. was like, that was a great answer. It's, oh it's, it's letter C or, or letter C. And the correct answer is letter C. That was your second answer, right? And you said it's located yeah. in the Vatican. Oh. It matches. Oh, yeah? That matches perfectly with what you said, Cass. So always pick if if you have an answer that matches perfectly with your own answer. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, a actually, ninety-eight percent chance that that's the correct answer. So the Sistine Chapel is C, located in the Vatican. Yeah. Yeah. No need to no need to overcomplicate. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's try the next one here. So uh, Michelangelo had been concerned with his. Um, finish this sentence for us, please. Uh, Michael Angelo had been concerned with his back problems. <laughs> back <Okay>. problem. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Michael Angelo had been concerned with his back problems. If I'm painting a ceiling, I'd probably be concerned with that as well. Um, what else am I concerned with? Um, and um, it's this uh, the 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 frescoes and how will it start the his work because he's not uh, very experienced enough on painting such kind of um, 
artwork. He's been a sculptor. Yeah, Michelangelo being concerned with his ability to do this kind of mm, work because I'm work. a sculptor, I'm not a painter of frescoes, right? Okay, um, which one of the choices here uh, matches one of those ways to finish that sentence? Okay, sorry, wait. Oh, wait. Oh. I think it's uh, letter I. That's the correct answer. His inexperienced yeah. painting frescoes. Yeah, so his inexperience. Inexperience. These answers always match grammatically as well. So yeah. um, if it doesn't match grammatically, if there's a grammar mistake when you put the two together, it's not the correct answer. But in this case, they are grammatically correct. So Michelangelo had been concerned with his inexperienced painting frescoes right exactly yes okay uh let's do one more so 29 um a logical problem michelangelo faced was or a logistical problem um okay a so, logistic mm -hmm, yeah go ahead okay a logistical problem michelangelo faced was uh, how on earth will he paint this at uh, the height of the ceiling? How can he reach the the the, the, the ceiling? <laughs> right. <laughs> you can just imagine, right? So you, you, the Pope is like, hey, come on, uh, Cassandra, paint my ceiling. And you're like, whoa, that's a big ceiling. But then that's not your only problem. It's way up there, right? So yeah. it's like, how do you want me to get up there to, to paint yes. that, right? So yeah. uh, that would be quite the quite the situation to be faced with for sure um okay so which one of these uh is do you think is the correct answer okay um i couldn't see sir the choice it's coming it's coming okay okay oh okay it's letter a for me yeah, it should be for everybody, hopefully, if they're in this IELTS exam. Um, yeah, it's the height of the ceiling, right? That's a, definitely yeah. a logistical problem, right? Yes. Um, and even if somebody doesn't understand the word logistical, I, th I mean, I think most people do because logic uh, is quite universal. But um, just even a problem Michelangelo faced was the height of the ceiling, right? So that yeah. makes a yes. lot of sense. Okay, so notice the strategy that you're using here, right? So you look at the statement and you think about the ending yourself it's kind of like a very complicated multiple choice question so multiple choice questions same strategy you think about the answer yourself first and then you choose the answer one of the most common mistakes for people with multiple choice questions because this is a type of multiple choice question um, is that they look at the answers people are often very quick to look at the answers, the choices, and then they kind of have this hope that one of the choices will kind of just like jump into their lap and say like, <laughs> hey, I'm the right answer. Look at me, choose me, I'm the right one. Ding, 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 ding. Um, but yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't work like that. And in fact, oftentimes choices can be really confusing when you look at them together. Um, so it's a bad idea to stare at the options hoping that one will magically reveal itself to be the correct choice. Um, it's, it's a much, much better strategy and much more effective to kind of look at the question or the statement, of course, in this case, think about what the right answer should be, and then look at the choices and see if any of them match. If none of them match, then the person in that case probably has no idea what's going on anyway, right? Um, yes. So so this is the right technique for this, Cassandra, and I appreciate you helping me show everybody uh, the right technique for this type of question. So um, now uh, there's several more. Of course, we have 30, 31, 32. And then uh, we have multiple choice questions, 33, 34, 35. And we're running out of time, but basically the same strategy will work for all of these questions until 35. So I'm going to give that to everyone for homework. How does that sound, Cassandra? 
Yeah, sure, sir. <laughs> Thanks for agreeing. I'm kind of like the Pope, right? You're Michelangelo. You're, you're being forced to agree with me here. Um, yeah. <laughs> you could be like, no, Adrian, I want to do it now. Um, but uh, I, unfortunately, I'm out of time. So I'm going to yeah. um, re leave this for everyone to do on their own. And uh, you can check kind of back on the video to look for these. Okay, okay sir. Somebody yes. Is... Um, okay. So, Cassandra, thank you so much for volunteering. I appreciate that, and we'll chat more later, okay? Yes, sir. My pleasure, sir. Okay. Bye, Cassandra. All right. Oh, let me stop that. All right, everyone. Um, so, let's, uh, let's go back to our syllabus here. So, that was our reading for today, everyone. Um, let me kind of... Let's see if I can hop back to our original uh, syllabus. Uh, thank you so much to all of our readers. Um, I really appreciate um, your help today going over this uh, passage about the uh, Sistine uh, Chapel ceiling. I hope that everybody kind of enjoyed that. Okay. And again, remember to get all of our books and videos and strategies for reading, uh, you will find those on our websites, aehelp.com and gilshelp.com, everybody. Um, use the code PERFECT9 for that 20% discount. Um, that's it for this class, but coming up in 24 minutes. Uh, we will have a listening part three, part four exercise. So uh, check that out. Um, thank you members for your support. The next class is an all chat class. So everybody will be able to join the chat. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out for now, but I will be back shortly. Bye.